two-arm sprinkler, as viewed from above, is shown in the sketch. Water is delivered to the sprinkler at a volume flow rate of 5 liters per minute, and it can be assumed that the flow is split evenly between the two nozzles. The nozzles both have a diameter of 2 millimeters and are both angled upwards from the horizontal plane at 30 degrees. The density of the water is 998 kilograms per cubic meter. Assume the pivot is frictionless. Calculate the rotational speed of the sprinkler. So our given information is this diagram. So we just need to take a moment to understand the diagram. So notice that this says this is the sprinkler viewed from above. So we're looking straight down and that's the pivot point. So water is entering from the base of the sprinkler there. Half of the water goes towards this nozzle and the other half goes towards this nozzle because we're told that it's split evenly between the two nozzles. Now both of these nozzles are tilted upwards from the horizontal plane at 30 degrees. So this nozzle is tilted upwards at 30 degrees. This one is also tilted upwards at 30 degrees. But notice this nozzle is also tilted in the horizontal plane at 45 degrees and that's shown on the diagram here. The distance from the nozzle to the pivot point for both of these exits is 15 centimeters. So what we're asked to find is how fast this thing turns. So we'll make a note of that. So our assumptions, we'll build this list as we go along. So what we want to do is go back to the diagram here and get a coordinate system and a control volume selected so we can proceed with our analysis. So the coordinate system, the origin is going to be right here at the pivot point and I'm going to choose this direction this way to be the x-coordinate. And perpendicular to that, heading off in this direction, is the y-coordinate. So notice that means that z is pointing straight out of the screen towards us. The control volume, I'm going to cut across this nozzle perpendicular and I'm also going to cut across that nozzle perpendicular and then enclose the entire sprinkler arm in the control volume. Now it's important to realize that this system is rotating but my coordinate system cannot rotate because that's not an inertial frame of reference. So the coordinate system that we're seeing here is attached to the ground. It's not rotating. So we're just showing the sprinkler arm when this happens to line up with the x-axis. So we're doing an instantaneous analysis of this sprinkler in that position. The control volume, however, is attached to the sprinkler and is rotating with the sprinkler, and that's allowable. The coordinate system cannot rotate, but the control volume certainly can. So let's begin our analysis. So this is a rotating system, so we're looking here at conservation of angular momentum. So we begin by putting down our governing equation for conservation of angular momentum. So that's the complete conservation of angular momentum equation. So now we want to consider each of these terms and see what's important in this problem. So the first is the torque created or the moment created by the body force. So we go back up to this, realize that G, because this is an overhead view, is pointing straight into the page. So the body force is not going to produce any moment around the z-axis. And we're interested in rotation around the z-axis. So we can ignore the body force because it's not going to contribute to the k component of this equation. So I cross that off and I say neglect body force. Next we see the moment produced by pressure forces on the boundary. Well notice that the pressure everywhere on the boundary here is atmospheric because these are free jets of water coming out of these two exits so that's just atmospheric pressure. The only place where the pressure will be higher than atmospheric is where this inlet pipe is cut by our control surface. So where the base connects to the arm, the control surface cuts through that pivot. So the pressure in that inlet pipe will be higher. But notice the position vector, the r at that point, is zero. So this term is going to be zero. So there's no net moment due to pressure. So we can just say no moment due to pressure. Next we have the viscous force term, or the moment that is produced by it. Now again, 
notice that the fluid is crossing the control surface just at 90 degrees. There's no shearing action anywhere on the surface of our control volume. So we can neglect shear forces. Next we have our torque. Remember that this pivot is frictionless. So when we look at the K component, rotation around this axis, there's not going to be any reaction torque. So we can get rid of that. So we say here frictionless pivot. Next we have our unsteady term. This is a steady problem, so we're going to get rid of that term as well. So we just say here steady state. And finally we have this term that takes into account flow across our control surface. So there's really three places where that's happening. We have an inlet coming in there. We have an exit here, which I'll label as number one. And we have an exit here, which I'll label as number two. And we'll be using that labeling as we go forward. Notice at the inlet, this position vector again is zero for exactly the same reason as it was zero back here. So we don't actually need to worry about the inlet because this term will be zero at the inlet. At the exits, however, it won't. So we have two uniform exits. So we can use the uniform flow assumption for this at our exit. So we make here uniform exits. So what's left of this equation? Zero on the left hand side is equal to R cross V at exit one times the mass flow rate at exit one plus R cross V at exit two times the mass flow rate at exit two. Remember the uniform flow version of this is just the mass flow rate multiplied by R cross V. Now remember that we said that the mass flow rate going to each arm is the same, so we can cancel these mass flow rates out because we have zero on this side. So the two mass flow rates cancel. Now we need to look at the R and V, so the position vector and the velocity vector. These should be vectors at each of those locations. So R1, so looking at this R first of all, again we just need to make this consistent with our coordinate system. So R1 has its root there and its tip at this exit. So that's in the negative I direction. So I'm going to call this R1 equal to R, and that'll be the 15 centimeters when I substitute numbers in, and that's in the minus I hat direction. R2, while I'm at it, is the same thing, but it's positive. So the same magnitude, but in the positive i-hat direction. So those are the position vectors of the two exits. Next thing we need to look at is the velocity vectors. And this is a little bit trickier because we need to get those velocities relative to the coordinate system. So the v's that we see in this equation are coming from right here, and those velocities have to be relative to our fixed coordinate system. So that's the key to getting these problems right, is getting this expression for velocity correct. So we'll start off with V1. Now going back here, we're talking about this velocity. The first thing I'm going to put down here is realize we know the volume flow rate and we know the size of this exit. So we actually know the speed of the flow coming out of there relative to the nozzle itself. It'll just be half of this volume flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area of this nozzle. And we'll calculate a number for that later on, but we certainly know that we can get that. And I'm going to call that V exit, so the velocity relative to the exit. So that's just the magnitude of the velocity relative to the nozzle tip. So I need to break that into components as I move along here. So first of all, at this exit, remember this is angled upwards from the horizontal at 30 degrees. So I'm going to break that into two components. First of all, one in the negative i-hat direction. So that is going to be v exit cos 30 to get that component lying in the horizontal plane, and that's in the minus i-hat direction. Now the other thing I need to take into account here is the fact that at this instant in time, this tip is actually moving in the positive y direction. Notice that because of the way this angle is tilted, 
this is going to be turning in this direction. So at the instant that we're looking at it, this tip is moving in that direction. So the water that's coming out of here will also have a y component. And that will be equal to r omega j. So this is due to the rotation. That tip is moving in the positive j direction at a speed r omega. So the velocity of the water coming out of it will have that magnitude in that direction. Now the other component that we need to get here is we need to realize that this fluid coming out of there also has a vertical component. So the z-axis is coming straight out of the screen at us and this water because the nozzle is tilted up at 30 degrees will have a component in the positive k direction. And that will be VE sine 30 in the k hat direction. So the water coming out of there has an I component and a K component due to the V exit, the two components of V exit, but it also has a J component because the tip is moving. So this would be the velocity of the water coming out of point one at the instant that the thing is shown in the diagram relative to a fixed coordinate system on the ground. Now we need to do the same thing for V2. So this expression will go in here for V1 now we need to finish this off by doing the same kind of thinking for V2. So V2 we arrive at in much the same way. It's a little more complicated just because of the fact there's this extra angle. So it's tilted up from the horizontal, but it's also tilted away from the x-axis. So we need to take that into account as well. Notice this VE for 2 will be the same because the same amount of flow goes to each nozzle and they're the same size. So that VE will be the same. So this VE is relative to the nozzle itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the magnitude of that velocity in the XY plane. So because it's tilted up at 30 degrees, the magnitude of that velocity in the XY plane would be VE cos 30. So, so far, that's the magnitude of the velocity laying in the XY plane. Now, what is the direction of that? Well, relative to this tip, it's going to be in this direction. So it's going to be cos 45 in the I hat direction, sine 45 in the J hat direction. So I'll multiply that by cos 45 I hat plus sine 45 J hat. So this is the two components of the velocity of that water coming out lying in the horizontal plane. Now the only thing that I need to remember here is that this is still the velocity of this water relative to this tip. But this tip at the instant shown is moving in this direction. So it's moving in the negative j hat direction at a speed of r omega. So I need to subtract off of that minus r omega j hat because it's moving in the negative j direction at a speed of r omega. Now the last thing that I need to remember here, this is the component in the horizontal plane. There's also a vertical component and it'll actually be the same as this one because it's tipped up at 30 degrees, the same as that first tip. So I just add on to here VE sine 30 in the k hat direction, positive k hat because it's spraying upwards. So that's my expression for velocity at point 2. Notice it's a little bit more complicated because of this extra angle. So the next thing I'm going to do here is just gather components together. Notice I have a J component here and here. So I want to gather these components together. So I have just one I, J, and K component. So I'll do that next. So there's my I component, my J component, and my K component. So now I've got all four of these things. Two position vectors, two velocity vectors. So now I'm ready to take these cross products. So the way I'm going to illustrate this is I'm just going to take the cross products of the unit vectors in the direction they're given here. And then we can write out the result fairly easily. So for R1 cross V1 we see the following. 
we're going to be taking minus i cross minus i, and that is 0. We're going to be taking a minus i crossed with a j, and remember that's minus k. And we're also going to be taking minus i crossed with a k component, and that's equal to j. So what I'm doing here, the left-hand side of this is just the direction of r1. It's always minus i. And the right-hand side of this cross product is the direction of v1. So minus i hat, positive j hat, positive k hat. So this just gives me the directions, at least, of each of the components of this uh, cross product. So then afterwards I can write down the cross product itself fairly easily. So we do the same thing next for R2 cross V2. So the left hand side of this is the direction of R2. Notice it's positive I everywhere. And the right hand side of this is the direction of V2. So I hat, J hat, k hat, and they're all positive. And this just gives the, the direction of those three components. So now I'm ready to take the actual cross products and put it all back into this equation. So that's what we'll do next. Left hand side is zero. So that's what we get when we multiply that out. So notice that these terms, i cross i, have gone to zero, and I haven't bothered to rewrite those. Also notice that term and this term cancel each other out. So they're both j hat terms, and this is the negative of that. So those cancel each other out. So notice everything that we have left here is k hat. So there's only a k component left. So I can divide this whole equation by k hat now, because the only terms I have left all have a k hat in them. So that I can cancel out. So just clean this up. Left hand side is still zero. We have a minus r omega here. And then we have this term. So plus v exit, cos 30, sine 45, minus r omega. So that is coming from here. Okay. So now we just solve this for omega. So move this and this over to the other side and divide by the 2r that will result. So our omega expression is ve cos 30 sine 45 divided by 2r. So we know everything in this equation. We still need to figure out this exit velocity, but we'll do that next, and then we can calculate omega. So v exit, remember what this is. That's the speed of the fluid as it comes out of the tip so that's just the volume flow rate out the tip divided by the area. So that's going to be our 2.5. Remember that's uh, half of the flow. It was 5 liters per minute. So there's 2.5 going out each tip. So that's liters per minute. So I have to divide by 60 to get liters per second. And I have to divide by 1000 to get meters cubed per second. So that is meters cubed per second. And in the denominator, we need the area. So that's pi by 4 times the diameter squared. And those are 2 millimeter, so 0 0.002 millimeter uh, nozzles. So that will be meters squared. So we calculate that out, and we get 13.263 meters per second. So that's the velocity of the water relative to the nozzle tip itself. So now I know everything that I need to substitute into here. So that's omega in radians per second. And I can convert that into revolutions per minute. And I get 259 revolutions per minute.